Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Um, buenos días, estudiantes. ¿Qué tal? Bien, so, today, um, we are going to start working with the topics of this week, ¿ok? Um, vocabulario, vocabulario de el salón de clases. ¿Qué hay en el salón de clases? So that should be your question. ¿Qué hay en el salón de clases? Remember, when you start memorizing vocabulary, try to go over everything and identify those words that are pretty easy to remember. Those words that are cognates. Remember, a cognate is a word that is similar in English and In both languages, English and Spanish, they mean the same thing, okay? That's a cognate. Um, they usually come from the same source, which is um, Latin, okay? Um, in general, it's Latin, the, the, the common denominator, okay? Bien, so, en la universidad. ¿verdad? Estamos ahora hablando, hablamos de la universidad. ¿Qué hay en el salón? That should be your question. ¿Qué hay en el salón de clases? Hay una profesora, hay unos estudiantes. Remember, I, H-A-Y, means there is, but also there are. ¿Ok? Bien, so go and, as I said, Um, scan the vocabulary, try to identify the words that you know, the words that are going to be easy to memorize, and then those that are very difficult, okay? Use flashcards very early in the morning, quiz yourself before going to bed time, <laughs> to, to bed. Um, study, okay? Study during the day and before going to sleep, okay? And then, las clases. ¿Sí? El vocabulario de las clases. Questions. ¿Qué clases? ¿Qué clases tienes este semestre? ¿Qué clases tienes este semestre? ¿Cuántas clases tienes este semestre? ¿Cuántas clases? How many? ¿Cuántas clases? Tienes este semestre, ¿verdad? And then, ¿cuáles son? Name them. ¿Cuáles son? And I can say, my third question will be, ¿cuál es tu clase favorita? Again, three basic questions. ¿Cuántas clases tienes este semestre? How many, ¿verdad? ¿Cuántas clases tienes este semestre? Second question, ¿cuáles son? So mention them. And then three, ¿cuál es tu clase favorita? To reply to these questions, tengo, ¿ok? That will be the job form. Tengo tres clases este semestre. Tengo una clase este semestre. And then to reply to ¿cuáles son? Son... Español, inglés y arte. ¿Sí? To reply to, um, ¿cuál es tu clase favorita? Then you start with, mi clase favorita es. Don't try to use English syntax. Okay? Don't say, mi favorita clase. No, because that's English syntax. So we need to use Spanish syntax. Okay? Mi clase, my class, and then favorita es, ¿sí? So, switch. Mi clase favorita es español. Mi clase favorita es inglés. Geología, música, física, economía, contabilidad, computación, ciencias, biología. Administración de empresas, ¿sí? Bien. Um, that's tema uno. ¿Ok? Remember, ¿qué hay en el salón? En el salón hay una computadora, un teléfono, una profesora, etc. And then, 
cuántas clases tienes este semestre, cuáles son, cuál es tu clase favorita. Tema 1. Tema 2. Los días de la semana. ¿sí? ¿Cuáles son los días de la semana? Bueno, well, we start with Monday. ¿Ok? A ver. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado y domingo. The questions. ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Qué día es hoy? And then hoy can be replaced by mañana, meaning tomorrow. So, ¿qué día es hoy? What day is today? ¿Qué día es mañana? What day is tomorrow? And then, ¿qué día es ayer? Ayer meaning yesterday. Okay? Bien. Also, you can ask when something is going to take place. For example, ¿cuándo? ¿Cuándo es el examen? ¿Cuándo es el programa? ¿Cuándo es el concierto? ¿Verdad? In our previous um, chapter, we learned to say, ¿a qué hora es? Now we are going to learn to say, ¿cuándo es? Okay? Instead of the time, now we are um, trying to target the day. Okay? ¿Cuándo es? El miércoles, el lunes, el martes, etc. Okay? Um, and that is tema 2. Simple tema 2. Okay? Los días. And then, ¿cuándo es? ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Cuándo es? Tema número 3. Las actividades diarias. Now you're going to memorize at least minimum five verbs. You need to know them by heart. Okay? The meaning of them. And then how to conjugate them. It's going to be pretty easy. Okay, once you know how to do one, then you know, because everything is a pattern here, um, you will know how to do the other ones, okay? Bien, let's um, talk about estudiar. Estudiar is ending with an um, AR, right? Estudiar. The same thing with hablar. So, estudiar is a cognate, to study, right? Hablar, to talk. Tomar, it's that one is tricky because it has several meanings. Tomar means to take. Por ejemplo, yo tomo una clase este verano. Take a class. Or tomar also to drink. ¿Sí? Bien, but we can use it in the context context of taking a class. Okay? Tomar. And then trabajar. Trabajar. To work. Trabajar. And then viajar, to travel, viajar, okay? I need you to know those verbs. Um, and then how to conjugate those verbs? Remember, in Spanish, we, we use one verb, for example, estudiar, hablar, um, tomar, trabajar, and then we change that form because that's the basic form. Trabajar, hablar, o estudiar is the basic form. It's like saying to be in English. Once you start changing that verb, that word, you're conjugating the word, okay? You're conjugating the verb. For example, the verb to be in the jaw form is am, I am. You're conjugating in English, okay? In Spanish, we do the same thing, okay? It's pretty easier to see it in English with the verb to be than it with the other ones, okay? Um, so, in Spanish, all the verbs are going to have changes, okay? Depending uh, on who is expressing the action, okay? Por ejemplo, Yo estudio, yo hablo español, yo tomo una clase, yo trabajo en la biblioteca, 
yo viajo a la Florida, por ejemplo. Okay. And then, um, please, I want you to notice the endings. Trabajo, viajo, hablo, estudio. All of them are ending with an O. It means that I, Joel, is doing the action. Okay? Now, if I'm asking you, do you work? Then I'm going to use the to form. I cannot use the job form, okay? Because then it doesn't make any sense. Trabajas en la biblioteca. Estudias español. Hablas con tus amigos. ¿Sí? Um, viajas. So now... It's changing the form because I'm using the to form, okay? Again, once you are replying and you're talking about yourself, then you use the job form. But if you're asking or saying something about another person, that's the to form, or it could be the él o ella or usted form, see? Um, so basic questions, estudias español, Hablas español, tomas muchas clases, trabajas todos los días, viajas a Canadá, and you will see, you will see in that um, slide how to formulate the question. Well, the questions is a yes or no question, and then the reply because it's a yes or no question. Uh, you have to state either yes or no, and then you give me the statement. Yes, I study. No, I don't study, okay? For example, let's take one example. ¿Estudias español? Sí, yo estudio español. Let's say that the answer is no. So it will be no, yo no estudio español. You need to know, like in English. No, I don't. You see the don't is the second no. The same thing in Spanish. No, yo no estudio español. And the no is in front of the verb, okay? Can you get rid of the yo? Yes, you can. I used the yo in the examples, in some of them, to give you the structure, but you don't need it. You will see it, okay? Um, and then you are going to find other verbs that are conjugated like um, estudiar, hablar, and so on, because they are called AR endings, okay? AR verbs. Um, once you know, I told you one, how to work with one, then you know how to work with any verb that is ending like that. Okay, so if I give you, for example, nadar, you should know that in the yo form is nado. The tu form is nadas. And once you know how to conjugate the el, ella, usted form, and nosotros, and the plural of el, ella, o usted, then you will know how to work with nadar, which is to swim, okay? Bien. That's tema tres, ¿sí? Tema cuatro. Now we're going to talk about what things we like to do. Before, with the simple verb, the, the present tense of hablar, we were talking about the activities that we do usually, habitually, all the time, or maybe never, yeah? When we use gustar, then we are talking about the activities that we like to do, see? And then you can say, me gusta, without the yo. Now you forget about the yo form, okay? The yo doesn't work here. So I cannot say yo me gusta. That's a, a terrible, <laughs> that's an horror, un horror, okay? A ver, me gusta, okay? Every time that I'm talking about the things that I like, I'm going to say, me gusta, ¿sí? 
me gusta. And then you are giving me the activity that you like to do. And that activity is going to remain in the basic form. You cannot conjugate that verb, okay? Because now you're not talking about things that you do usually, habitually, all the time or never, but you're talking about the activities that you like to do, see? Bien. Um, me gusta estudiar. Me gusta estudiar. Let's say that that's not the case. Then you're going to say the things that you don't like. You start with the no. No me gusta estudiar. No me gusta estudiar. Hablar. Me gusta hablar con mis amigas. No. No me gusta hablar con mis amigas. ¿Sí? Remember, that's the structure. Me gusta plus the infinitive. That's all the time that I'm talking about myself. If I'm talking about you, I can ask you or I can state something about you. Okay, so let's let's um, let's start with the question. Te gusta hablar con tus amigas? And then the intonation is the same construction, but then the intonation and the question marks at the beginning and at the end of my statement, okay? ¿Te gusta estudiar español? ¿Sí? ¿Te gusta trabajar? ¿Te gusta viajar? And then remember the infinitive at the end. If I'm saying a statement about you, uh, I can say, ¿Te gusta hablar? ¿Te gusta estudiar? I can see that. ¿Te gusta estudiar? ¿Sí? Bien. Um, in front of me gusta estudiar, sometimes we use a me. It's not needed. Sometimes we use it for emphasis because uh, if we think about it, it's redundant. In Spanish, we don't have to say a mí, okay? Because once I say me, everybody's going to understand that I'm talking about myself, okay? So, a mí me gusta. A ti will be the two form. A ti te gusta estudiar. We don't need it. Why? Because once I say te gusta estudiar, it's understood. Now, if I say le gusta estudiar, de le, it's for the third person. But the, in the third person, we have él, ella, and also that uh, construction is used also for the, the usted form, okay? The formal expression. So there we have three options. Also, the le is used for the plural. So now in total, we have six options. So if I say le gusta, then you will be wondering, but who are you talking about, right? So then in that case, I have to mention the person first. And I'm going to start with an A. A María le gusta estudiar. A José le gusta estudiar. A Pedro no le gusta estudiar. So when we have the le, we have to be more specific. Unless we mentioned the person and we both know that we are talking about José, Pedro, los estudiantes, las profesoras, los profesores. And then we don't have to keep mentioning los estudiantes, a las profesoras, because it's understood, okay? So that's tema cuatro, tema cuatro. And make sure that you know how to express the things that you like, how to ask another person what that person likes to do, and, uh, and be able to say the things that you like and you don't like to do the, 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 the activities that you don't like to do, see? 
Por ejemplo, no me gusta estudiar. No. If I ask you, ¿te gusta estudiar? And then, no, no me gusta estudiar. Bien. So that's tema 4. Tema 5. Um, tema 5, it's about the verb estar. En estar, um, in Spanish, means to be. I don't know if you remember, but the, the verb ser in Spanish also means to be. Um, but we establish a difference, okay, in Spanish. Um, en estar means to be located in a place. It's about location, location, location. Besides expressing how we feel, okay? So now we are going to start using estar because when we um, started this course, one of the first questions that I gave you was, ¿Cómo estás? Remember? ¿Cómo estás? And then you were saying, estoy bien. So we're going to keep using estar to express how we feel. And remember, how we feel in a particular period of time. This is the period of time. I'm limiting the time. In that particular, being specific, period of time, I feel like this, okay? Bien. So, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien. ¿Cómo estás? Estoy mal. Estoy enfermo. Estoy enferma. Meaning sick. ¿Verdad? ¿Cómo estás? Estoy alegre. Think about alegre. It will help you to connect. Okay? The medicine. Bien. So, how we feel? I'm happy within a period of time because of something. Remember, this is how I feel in this particular period of time. Okay? If I want to express that I'm ha um, I am a happy person, that's another verb. That's going to be the verb ser. And that's not what we're talking about now. Now we're talking about how we feel, okay? Bien. Estoy bien, estoy mal, estoy alegre, estoy enfermo, estoy enferma, ¿sí? Bien, but also location, as I said before, and I want you to keep that in mind, okay? Location, location, location. My question, ¿dónde estás? Estoy, and then en, estoy en la, la universidad. Estoy en la cafetería. Estoy en el salón de clases. Estoy en... La casa. Remember la casa? House. Estoy en la casa. Estoy en el estadio. ¿Sí? Estoy en el concierto. ¿Dónde estás? Estoy en la fiesta. ¿Sí? Bien. And that's tema 5. Make sure that you know how to conjugate the verb estar. Not only in the job form, okay? or the to form, but also el, ella, usted, nosotros, we, ¿verdad? O nosotras, ellos, ellas y ustedes, ¿sí? Those are the perspectives. Um, the vosotros, you can learn it, okay? Um, to be politically correct, I'm not going to use it um, in a quiz, for example, okay? Or the final. I included the vosotros, but it's not needed. The vosotros is the you all, okay? The you all form is informal, okay? The tú in the plural form. Bien. And then tema seis, los números. Los números. Los números. Um, so I urge you to review basic numbers and then start here learning from 31 to 100, see? ¿sí? Eh, keep in mind that 
or review. Review the question. ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? Now, in Spanish, we love to combine two digits. In the previous question, in the previous chapter, you learned to say 917357789, for example. Now, in this section, what we are going to do is to combine two digits. For example, 212 360 4059. Okay, ¿cuál es tu número de teléfono? Mi número de teléfono es. Okay, and then try to start combining two digits. See? Bien. Um, so, that's basically. Capítulo 2, the, the most important thing here is how to conjugate verbs. Because once you know how to conjugate verbs, you are expressing things, okay? So learn verbs and how to conjugate them. Remember, when you are expressing that you like something, the structure is totally different, okay? There's no... I like and for example to study that that structure doesn't work here okay actually the real structure here is for example studying is pleasing to me that's the real translation okay the thing is that we prefer to translate that as I like to study. But in reality, the translation, the rough translation is studying is pleasing to me. So that's why we don't use the yo there. Never, ever. Okay? Bien. If you have questions, please use the, um, the textbook to read about the grammar do the activities, redo the activities, um, and after that, if you're still having problems, contact me, okay? Bien, chao, hasta luego.